ho, ho, Merry Christmas! Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Need I Say Mer, the Christmas podcast. Uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by special guest David McCullough. Hello, David. Good to good to see you. Hello, Adam. How are you? I'm I'm doing okay, and you're looking quite festive in your Christmas jumper today. Yes, that is good. How, how many Christmas jumpers do you own? Well, whenever I was a single man, I owned none. I got married, and I think I now have seven, and I've been <laughs> married for twelve years, so um, okay. it's not a bad average. No, it's working. I'm I'm at the rate of acquiring one new one a year, and I'm actually uh, I'm wearing one with the robins on now, which is my purchase for this year found in a charity shop in Plymouth so oh I'm very pleased with that but tell us uh what we're more interested in rather than how many Christmas jumpers you have where, where are you who are you what do you do um tell us a bit about yourself so I am in the southeast of Northern Ireland in the county of Down in a little fishing village called Anna Long um if I look out one window I can see the Mourne Mountains which some folks may be familiar with and as I look out the other window I look across the Irish Sea and on particular days we can see the Isle of Man and I am a Presbyterian minister uh, to a congregation here in the center of the village of Anna Long. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a very lovely setting to be I, I may have to visit one day well, you're more than welcome. And how long have you been minister there? So uh, just over five years now. And uh, we moved to Analong from Malawi, where we've been missionaries for five years. And we're now in Analong five years. OK, right. I, and probably quite a few differences between Analong and Malawi. Uh, there are. And you would be surprised to know there are some similarities. So uh, but yeah, maybe before we get into the questions I'm asking all of our guests, I'd love to hear a bit about Christmas in Malawi and how churches celebrate what that's like. Uh, Christmas in Malawi is a, a wonderful, it is a wonderful thing. Um, we live beside a local church and in fact, we had two local churches beside us. And as the run up to Christmas would come, you'd hear the choirs practice. And uh, certainly whenever we were there for most of the five years, every year on a Tuesday evening, you would hear the choirs singing unaccompanied, Oh, Holy Night. Oh. And uh, towards the end of our time in Malawi, there's a lot of power cuts. And so you'd be sitting in the dark with candlelight and coming through the windows would be this angelic choir singing, Oh, Holy Night. Uh, and so music is a huge part of what happens at Christmas. Uh, food is a huge part. Uh, chicken would be the meal of choice for Christmas Day. Okay. Um, and community is big. So folks gather in places of worship on Christmas Day to celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus. Interestingly enough, preparations don't start until Christmas Eve. It's not a mad dash uh, to the shops. Um, it's only recently uh, that you would have seen Christmas decorations appearing in some of the bigger supermarkets, but okay. no one really worried about Christmas until Christmas Eve. And that was actually quite nice. There was no hype. There was n you, you were lulled into Christmas and it was lovely. Yeah, I can imagine that being quite, quite appealing uh, where we have this mad rush for weeks beforehand trying to get yeah. everything ready. Actually, just to wait until Christmas Eve and then Oh, that celebration and listening to that singing in the candlelight is quite a lovely image to think about it is i should also say we were sitting in 25 degrees centigrade at night so i uh, don't think of a romantic idea of christmas uh, with a fire and cold outside and the snow falling it was uh, high temperatures and okay. <laughs> uncomfortable yes okay i uh, living in wales i i prefer cold and wet weather uh, and so this climate here suits me um, better but um have you been back to Malawi since you left five years ago? Yes, I was back last year. Um, Scripture, I worked for Scripture Union in Malawi and they celebrated their 50th anniversary in the country. And so I went back and was their guest speaker last year. And so uh, my wife and I actually met in Malawi. Um, she was a, a missionary with the Navigators and okay. I was out with Scripture Union. We met, uh, but we both have a, a connection with Malawi for the past 20 years or so. And, and then you've acquired your Christmas jumpers since that time of meeting her. So that's good. <laughs> Uh, so we're getting to some questions that I'm asking every guest that appears on this podcast, beginning with this question. What is your favourite festive food item? Well, this will come as probably, uh, well, I should say no surprise, but nobody knows me, so it might be a surprise, but it is the traditional turkey and ham. Uh, I, I okay. reserve it only for Christmas. I don't have it any other time of the year. And so when the first of the Christmas dinners roll around around the second week in December, it has to be turkey and ham. Um, the taste together, the fusion together, the moisture together, it, it's the meal to have. Okay, that, that sounds good. And, and to have something that you say specially for Christmas, 
to give it that extra special yeah. Christmas thing. Roast beef the rest of the year, but turkey and ham for Christmas only. Turkey and ham, that sounds good. And uh, let's talk about music. Your favourite non-religious Christmas song? This has been a hard one to answer because I could have told you more the ones I don't like easier than the ones I do like. Uh, uh, we've come the 1st of November, we start listening to Christmas music and that's the rule in our house. Um, we okay. don't decorate until December, but we start to get uh, into the mood. And thinking of this, I have to say, every time Merry Christmas Everyone by Shake and Stevens comes on, that is my favourite. Um, okay, it's my favourite because it reminds me of parties at school um it mentioned a moment ago about the sentimentality that I, that idea of what we think christmas should be cold dark nights snow there's a bit of sentimentality in that uh, but there's a particular line where he talks about wishing we could sing christmas songs all throughout the year uh, and there's something in that not just in the non-religious song but in the taking it further into what the significance of christmas is so whether shake and stevens realized it or not there's a bit of depth into that that goes beyond the mere uh, corporate and materialistic perspective of Christmas. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Uh, yeah, actually, some of these non-religious songs may speak some truths that they didn't realise. Uh, yeah. And actually, Christmas is something to be celebrated through the year, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, whether you listen to Shaking Stevens all year or not. But we're going <laughs> with the first as your point of starting to listen. That's that's pleasingly early. I'm pleased to hear that. And, yeah. yeah. Um, it is an interesting how it came around because... Um, a friend of mine pointed me in the direction of a radio station about 15 years ago uh, from Sydney, Australia, just as online radio was coming um, around. I think in those days it was just called Hope FM, but it's now Hope something else. But uh, they had a Christmas station that always started on the 1st of November and finished on the 31st of December. And that's what we listen to and continue to listen to. They do play it all year round now since the pandemic. But um, yeah, that, that traditionally is 1st of November, Christmas hope comes on and it stays on and that's it. And I, I do feel like I need to ask if you could give me an example of a Christmas song that you really don't like, because you, you mentioned that there were quite a few that you could put into that category. I'm interested <laughs> just to try and stir up some controversy with the listeners. Well, having lived in Africa, in one of the poorest countries in the world, um, Band Aid song, Do They Know It's Christmas? Yes, they absolutely do. And uh, so Band Aid, I'm afraid, is banned in our <laughs> house. And uh, whenever it comes on the radio, we we turn it down. Uh, yeah, that does sound fair. Um, but I, I, as I say on each episode, we do encourage correspondence for this podcast if anyone wants to write in. Uh, and cr critique that perspective, you're very welcome. But we move on to the next question about Christmas decorations. And I'm interested in your least favourite Christmas decoration. What's your least favourite Christmas decoration? This is my wife's influence, um, because before I met her, I had no problem with tinsel. And since marrying her, tinsel is now an issue. N not that uh, she's allergic to it, but she just does not like tinsel and that has worn on to me. And so there's no tinsel about the McCullough house at all at Christmas. Um, she probably would let us get away with a little bit of the traditional string tinsel, but any decoration that has draping tinsel on it is a, is a no-go. Uh, so so we, were you used to having quite a lot of tinsel before that? Was that quite a big part of your Christmas? Yes, in our childhood home, uh, it was a whole operation um, to put tinsel around uh, the main hallway in the house, around the top of it, so that the light would reflect off it. And so, yes, it was a big thing growing up, but no longer. No longer. Yeah, I, it's quite a common answer uh, that people are giving for this podcast of tinsel. It does seem to be a, a decoration that's able to elicit very strong feelings uh, about it. So there we go. Well, I, I hope you're still able to enjoy some good decorations alongside the lack of tinsel. Brings us to the final question, which gets more to the, the heart of the real meaning of Christmas, uh, beyond just the food and the, the music and the decorations. Who is your favourite person in the nativity account, not including Jesus? Because I assume Jesus is your favourite. I'd hope so. Well, I'm going to take a liberty here. Um, I can't just choose one shepherd, but it would have to be the shepherds and uh, i love that's permitted yes I... that's good <laughs> the collective group of the shepherds yeah. i love the shepherds for quite a number of reasons okay. uh, first of all my favorite carol which i know isn't a question but i always finish our community carol service with hark the herald angels sing um i do a local radio show uh, at christmas here and 
we always finish with Hark the Herald simply because of the message that was proclaimed to those who society had rejected or not rejected, but they were the lowest in society. They were out on, on the hills. They were away from the center of where everything was. And so it communicates that the message of the gospel is to go far and wide uh, from the highest in society to the lowest. No one escapes the reach, the power and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ coming into the world. And so for those humble shepherds, as the old Carol would tell us, um, they heard, but they did something more significant. They went mm -hmm. and they gathered at that manger and they proclaimed, or well, they, they witnessed the proclamation of the truth of those angels uh, that declared Christ the Messiah was born. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful, uh, uh, there's fields all around us here. Um, we do have sheep as well in those fields, and uh, particularly in the area where I minister, live and work and socialize, it, it's a very easy picture um, because we have we still have shepherds today who come January, February, March are out in their fields lambing. And so it's a, it's a story that connects well and deep in this community in which I live and work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to think think about the shepherds and uh, getting that news and uh, for us to see that that is news for all people, as you said, and for, for us as ministers, as we, yeah. we share the good news this Christmas, we remember that it's not just for one type of person, but for all people and for listeners who aren't ministers as well. We, we all know people who don't know Jesus, don't we long to know Jesus if, if we're followers of him? And so that, that reminder of the shepherds, that's great. Thank you, David. Yeah. It's been good to have you on. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Christmas podcast. And we hope that you have a very happy Christmas. Thank you. And to you as well. Merry Christmas.